Now with the historian's report. How did previous events impact this genocide? So some previous events that impacted the genocide are the Khmer Rouge success, successfully deposing Lan Nol's government in 1975. Soon after, Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge began an organized mission uh, reconstructing Cambodia on the communi communist model of Laos, China. This is what led to the genocide. And what group or groups of people were in power before this event took place? Uh, the leader of Cambodia was Prince Sihanouk until Pol Pot took over. Mm, what were some major events in the recent past that led to the changes in government? The war between the Khmer Rouge and uh, Lan Nol. Um, in, in March 19, 1970, General, General Lan Nol uh, initiated a coup while Cambodia's leader, <coughs> Prince Norodom, was out of the country, and that was what led to changes. Uh, what government was in place? It was Prince Minister <coughs> Norodom Sihanouk, and the Khmer Rouge then took over on April 17, 1995. What social groups were involved? Well, Cambodia was divided socially by Cambodians, Buddhist, Christian, Islam, atheists, animists, Roman Catholics, Muslims, and Vietnamese. And now with the geographer's report. Cambodia is located in South East Asia, and about 5% of the people are Vietnamese and 1% are Chinese. Other ethnic groups include the Cham Malays and the Hill tribes people. Theravada Buddhism is the state religion. About 95% of the people are Buddhist. The Cham Malays are Muslims. Khmer is the official language, but French and English are widely used. Cambodia was divided socially by Cambodians, Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, Atheism, and Indianism, Roman Catholics, Muslims, and Vietnamese. Cambodia, a country in the Southeast Asia, is less than half the size of California, with its present day capital in Phnom Penh. In 1953, Cambodia gained its independence from France after nearly 100 years of colonist rule. Cambodia's elected, elected Prime Minister, Nordam Sihano, adopted an official policy of neutrality. In addition, religion was another point the Khmer Rouge didn't agree with. Christians, Buddhists, Buddhists, and Cambodian Muslims, aka Cham, were prosecuted and killed for their beliefs. Um, from 1969 until 1973, the U.S. intermittently bombed North Vietnamese sanctuaries in eastern Cambodia, killing up to 150,000 Cambodian peasants. All foreigners were thus expelled, embassies closed, and any foreign economic or medical assistance was refused. The use of foreign languages was banned, newspapers and television, and television stations were shut down, radios and bicycles confiscated, and mail and telephone usage curtailed. All of Cambodian cities were then forcibly evacuated, and Vietnam, two million inhabitants were evacuated on foot onto the countryside of Gunpoint. As many as 20,000 died along the way. Millions of Cambodians accustomed to city life were now forced into slave labor in Pol Pot's killing fields, where they soon began dying from overwork. In the villages, unsupervised, gatherings of them, then two per persons were forbidden. Young people were taken from their parents and placed in communals. They were later married in collective ceremonies involving hundreds of often unwilling couples. On December 25, 1978, Vietnam launched a full-scale invasion of Cambodia, seeking to end Khmer Rouge border attacks. On January 7, Vietnam fell and Pol Pot was deposed. The Vietnamese then installed a puppet government consisting of Khmer Rouge defectors. And now with the politicians' report. People lost their homes. Where did they go? For the most part, people did not have a choice. Pol Pot forced them into the countryside to work. One thing you can compare what Pol Pot made these people do is in 
Mao Tzu Tongs in China. During this genocide, there were not many bystanders. Pol Pot mostly killed anybody who would not cooperate. The few bystanders that there were were some American soldiers that were involved in the Vietnam War and some surrounding countries. One policy that helped Pol Pot majorly was the Khmer Rouge movement. This movement allowed Pol Pot to force people into the fields to work and remove all Western innovations. There are a lot of things that you can do to stop from a genocide like this to happen again. One thing you can do is to not let is to make sure your society can't let one person rise to power. Also, a more simple thing is to try your best to treat each other fairly. That way nobody has anything against a certain group of people or even their own people, in this case with the Cambodian genocide. Overall, Pol Pot killed a lot of people. Even though it didn't, it happened quite a long time ago. It can still happen again today. And now with the Economist report. Under the leadership of the Khmer Rouge, Cambodia underwent a brutal and radical revolution. Their immediate goal were to overhaul the social system and to revitalize the national economy. The economic development strategy of the Khmer Rouge was to build a strong ed agricultural base supported by local small industries and handicrafts. Cambodia could only achieve economic and industrial development by increasing and expanding agricultural production. The Khmer Rouge, as soon as it took power on April 17, 1975, emptied Phan as well as its cities and towns, and forced people into the countryside. This overnight evacuation was motivated by the urgent need to rebuild the country's war-torn economy and by the Khmer Rouge penetry hostility towards the cities. The only people who were not ordered to leave the city were those who operated essential public services. They didn't have any transport facilities to bring food to the people, and so the logical thing was to bring the food, the people to the food to evacuate them all and make them get into our rice fields. The rice crop in November 1976 was reported to be in good relation to earlier years. At the same time, plantations producing cotton, rubber, and bananas were established or rehabilitated. While, Khmer, while the Khmer Rouge gave high priority to ag agriculture and neglected industry, Pol Pot sought to consolidate and perfect existing factories rather than to build new ones. The Cambodian economic system was unique in at least two respects. First, the government abolished private ownership of the land. The Khmer Rouge believed that under the new government, Cambodia could be a classless society of perfect harmony, and that private ownership was a source of egoistic feelings that consequently social injustices.